Hey guys, uh, it's been a while. I'm updating a, a song for a friend of mine. Um, it's called Alive. It's from Hillsong. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you've heard it. It's pretty popular these days. Um, and uh, I thought this song was kind of interesting uh, because it it plays off of uh, another song we did a, a couple months ago, uh, Trading My Sorrows. So I want to show you um, three ways to, to play. I mean, the song is really simple. It's the if you you can you can literally play the same uh, the same chord progression the whole song and it works fine. You don't have to change anything. Um, uh, but sometimes that can get uh, honestly the congregation probably doesn't mind as much. It's more the musicians. We just get we can get bored if we're just playing the same thing over and over again, over again. Um, and then we get lazy and then we don't play it as well. So I think it's important to find variations of. Uh, whatever it is you're doing uh, that you can incorporate um, to kind of give yourself, even if it's just one variation that you rotate back and forth, um, it helps It helps keep you focused, keep, keeps you sharp, and it also um, makes it more interesting for those listening. So um, the, the kind of, if you've listened to the song, there's a, there's a synth um, uh, lead, and if you're playing bass guitar, um, most of the time, most bass players would just play what the synth bass was playing, which is um, something like this. Right, just a B, F sharp, G, G, B, A. Um, so you can literally play the entire song just like that. Um, uh, now, uh, I'm gonna, it's, it's a little syncopated, uh, so we, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tap a beat and just go through that um, so you can, you can follow along with exactly, exactly how that rhythm's supposed to sit on top of the beat. So if our, uh, if our, if our tempo is um, one, two, three, four. So that last note, that G, is uh, landing on the four of the first measure. Uh, so if I was counting it like traditional one E and a two E and a, it would be one a, uh, so one a uh, two and three. One a uh, and two. Uh, one a uh, and E four. That would be the kind of traditional one and a way of counting it. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, so it's, I think it's easier if you just feel how that, that tempo sits. Um, it's a, um, it's a one, two, three, four, five. So it's, um, it's five beats on top of four beats. Five equal beats on top of four equal beats. So the, so the, um, you know, the kick uh, and the snare, they're just playing, you know, right on the beat. And we come in with. So one simpler way to count this is you play the little thing, you know that you end up on four, and then you just count four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that way it keeps you honest with, with where, where you're coming in. Um, the other thing you can do, if you want to make it a little bit more interesting, uh, variation number one, is uh, take it up an octave. That's always fun. And then you can do uh, a couple of little add-ons. So I go uh, D, F sharp, G on that little walk up 
and uh, D, C sharp, B on the walk down. If you want to have a little, couple little add-ins. Um, all right, so that's one, I mean, basically it's the same thing. Uh, the other thing you can do is, um, if you listen to the uh, the, the kind of uh, um, pre-arranged synth loop version of the song, um, they go... Um, So they, they continue that um, five over four for another round. What that means is the second time you play it, uh, 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 and you land, that, that, that last thing that you landed on is, the, is beat three now. Um, we played the first notes and we landed on four, and we play the same pattern again, you know, instead of landing on one. So we lost a beat, play it again, you lose another beat, so you land on three. So you remember that, and you can just play that, that same um, rhythm rhythm over again on that last like G So that's uh, variation three. Uh, last variation, and I told you it it uh, it's it sounds something like trading my sorrows. You can play this because the way they, the synth actually goes, they they play a harmony on top of it. So if you if you watch my video on trading my sorrows, you'll recall we had two um, voicings we were using. Well, we were in the key of A. All right. So let's just pretend like we're in the key of A for a second. I'll show you the voicings we had. We had. This voicing where you're um, one fret uh, with the high note, you're one fret uh, above where you are with the low note. Then you had this voicing where you were on the same fret. Right? And we, we did a couple things where you switch around between those two. Same thing here, um, but I'm starting on a B minor. So just remember if it's a minor interval, you're going to be on the same fret. If it's a uh, so on the B, it's a B minor. F is a minor interval between the F sharp and the A, and then you have a, a major interval here between the G and the B, and then another major interval on the A. So it sounds like this. I like to do when I'm playing electric guitar is um, when it goes to the part um, and so you are you are you are my freedom I like to change the first note and instead of instead of playing uh, this B minor I like to actually go all the way to a, a D major um, so, um, so um, I'm all the way up to the D, right, D, F sharp, G, G, B, what does that sound like? Let me play that for you a little differently. It's a halftime version of Trading My Sorrows in the key of D. You can play it up there. So you see it's um it's um it's almost identical in terms of the chord progression. So uh so that's it. You've got version one, version two, 
version three. Or is it, uh, ah, sorry. Uh, with a couple of add-ons for, call it 3A, and then version four. Oops, sorry. And uh, so that's it. So I'm going to cut it off there. Uh, feel free to post comments. Let me know what you think. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the, the tutorial. Thanks.